What's up, everybody? I'm a little bit late jumping on here. Sorry about that. I'm going to post this as usual on Facebook before we get started. And then I'll start. And some of you might pop on while I'm talking. So, let's see. Whoops. And a post is showing up here. Tuners in the background partying with me. We're in the break room hiding out while kitties are getting TNR'd as we speak. I think we had 23 today. Yay, Kathy Hood for trapping kitties. Exciting stuff. All right. Oh, I've got people on here. There's Pat and Laurel. I am at the Alafaya Clinic. Whoop, whoop. Schooner and I are hanging out. I brought them because today has to do with dogs. And I was like, I can't talk about dogs. Hey, Betsy. Um, with all the kitties around here. But, you know, the kitties get loved, too. I've seen my fair share of cats in the last couple weeks. So it's been crazy learning more about cats and uh I didn't realize all the cats that run around by themselves in the morning or out in the streets um, are so small. It's crazy. We did get a kitten today and we did a neuter on a kitten. So that was exciting. Um, but Schooner's here to help me talk about bringing a pup home and introducing a pup to another pup and all that fun stuff. Um, and then of course, if you guys have any questions along the way, you can go ahead and ask them. I'm going to pull the notes up on my phone because I don't like being away from the screen in case you guys start talking to me. Um, so give me one second here. Everybody enjoying their wonderful Wednesday? I think this is it. These are pretty fun. I don't know if you guys read my email yesterday. I did send out a link where Christina was kind of going over tips and tricks and everything like that. Um, ideally, we'll have a video of an actual meet and greet because Trixie and Rex kind of ignored, ignored each other in the video, but not as much as Taco Tuesday. I know. Taco Tuesday is the best. I'm just going to grab some water here. Um, I don't even know what you could eat on Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday. I don't know. Foster Dog Blue was adopted yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Yippee. That is good. I know we are still doing adoptions. So hopefully, uh, and I don't know if the pregnant mom had pup her puppies yet. I should find that out. Um, in fact, I'll ask Nicole so that way I can tell you guys on this call. Um, oh, thought somebody was breaking down the door there. Um, did pregnant mom have her pups? All right. So without further ado, we'll just go ahead and get started here. Um, and then always, if you guys have any questions, you can ask them. I have a different buff on today. I just have it down because I realize that I'm in this room alone and nobody else is with me besides Schooner. And if I'm infected, he's already exposed. So there's nothing we can do about it. Um, so the dual dog household. You guys know I have three dogs. Um, I did have Schooner by himself for a while uh, before I got my other two crazy pups and I fostered dogs while I had Schooner. Um, but he is definitely, um, he enjoys the company of other dogs. So um, when you do have two dogs in your household, you have a playmate. Um, if there's a resident dog that's there for a while, they can kind of teach the other dog how things go. Hey, Jackie. Um, they socialize the other dog. So um, you have instant socialization, at least between two dogs there. Uh, there's exercise. So I will say my dogs, you guys have seen them. They love to run around in the backyard. Uh, I run my dogs on a regular basis, but they also exercise each other every day. So I don't, um, if I'm not able to get out on a walk or a run or whatever it is, I don't worry too much because they chase each other around the backyard and run up and down the fence line. Um, which Schooner, I will say, did not do that as much. He didn't run around in the backyard by himself unless I was out there playing fetch with him. 
So now he gets even more exercise with the other two running around. Um, it's also mental stimulation. So, and then they get into that pack mentality. So they have uh, somebody to um, play games with, keep them entertained. They aren't as depressed and lonely. Uh, they're less likely to be destructive. Although guess what? I have a new hole in my backyard as of yesterday. I think it's because I've been coming back to work and the dogs are like, wait a minute. Why aren't you here with us all day? Um, so triple dug a hole and I'm not sure if Spooner and Hops helped them because I've caught all three of them trying to do it in front of me in the last week. So, um, they are less destructive. However, they can band together and do even more destruction. Um, but that's usually not the case. Uh, really, this is going to sound cheesy. There's more love going around. So there's more love for them and there's more love for you. Uh, cause three dogs versus one dog or two dogs versus one dog. You have one dog to pet, which is absolutely awesome and great. But then if you get two or three dogs, you've got two or three dogs coming at you and giving you hugs and kisses and jumping on top of you. Um, and they just get more love too. Cause if you're busy with one of them, then the other one could be partying around and keeping each other busy. Um, again, they, it can be easier to train. Uh, it can be therapy for you at home. We were just talking about this yesterday, how if somebody has been living alone through all of this um, and they have an animal, it's probably a little bit more uh, tolerable, tolerable than um, if you were alone by yourself, at least if you're a social person, if you don't like being around people or animals, I guess it wouldn't matter. But I think animals have definitely helped me out in this situation um, and kept me sane through everything. Um, and then if you have kids, it actually teaches kids responsibility. Curious to see Hops dig a hole. It is crazy. So um, Hops will like, she just started doing this meerkat thing where she balances on two legs. And um, she does it sometimes when she's marking, when she goes to the bathroom too. She just balances on the two legs and scratches real quick. She never hits the ground. She's quick. She's a talented little tripod. Um, but if you guys have kids, it helps teach them responsibility of caring for another, uh, living human being or creature, not human being. Um, but it teaches them responsibility. It's probably also a way that you can bond with your kids, um, by helping them teach the dog tricks and also, um, teaching the manners. We're going to show Spoonie's snout tricks. Stop. We just practiced. Good boy. Get it. There we go. Um, so that's the benefits of having uh, multiple dogs in your household. Uh, what do you do when you first bring your dog home? So a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I got another dog. We're just going to throw them right in. They don't need to adjust. Um, but there are, there's more and more um, stuff coming out where dogs do have adjustment periods. Granted, cats have a longer adjustment period, but dogs also have to adjust to new environments. Just like when they come to the shelter sometimes, we know that some dogs need chill time and we keep them in the back because we can tell that they need chill time. So if you already have a dog, um, it's a little different than bringing just a new dog into your household. So if you are going to get your new dog, um, leave your other dogs at home unless you're coming in to do the meet and greet, which I highly recommend doing meet and greets um, just because that way you have a better idea and you're not going in blind when you get home. Those things can be different when you're at home. Um, but leave your other dogs at home the day you're going to pick your new dog up. Um, so unless you're fostering like puppies or something, I've had my dogs in the car and then had the puppies in the crate. But if you're going to bring your new pup home, just make sure that that dog is by itself in your truck, car, whatever. You can put them in a crate if you want. Um, meet and greets are okay. But like, if you're gonna, if you brought your dog to the shelter to do a meet and greet, then arrange to have two cars or come back and get the other dog separately, just because you don't want things to go great. And then you get in the car and the dogs get in fight. That would be terrible. Um, dog proof your house. So um, I have lost many sunglasses and flip flops to the dog cause um, in my day. Uh, so make sure you're picking up all your belongings, anything that dogs would think to chew on, make sure that you pick it up off the floor, put it in drawers, unless your dog is smart, like triple and opens drawers and chews on things that she finds in the drawers, then you're in trouble, um, like me, and then you have to hide it somewhere else. Um, but 
anything that you don't want to get chewed on should be put away because otherwise you're going to get upset at the dog, but it's not the dog's fault. They don't know any different because they're coming into a new environment. So just remember that. And it's also just stuff. You can always buy more. Um, I've had to try and tell myself that <laughs> now. Um, and then put your other animals in the uh, uh, in a different room for the time being. So this new dog is coming to a new environment and um, another animal can be a stressor, whether it's a, a ferret, a dog, a cat, a rabbit, um, whatever you guys have at home, make sure they're in a different room um, when the new dog arrives. Um, so when you do come home, let your new dog get the lay of the land. Let them go out and smell and discover things. Um, you don't necessarily let, have to let them smell every single room at first. Uh, maybe you just want to do the living room and then the outside and everything, um, just so they get a feel for where they're at and what they're doing. Um, I know the instinct is or the want is to be like, we let's let our dogs run free together, but really just make sure the other dogs in the other room and give them something to keep them busy so they're not freaked out. So put a Kong with peanut butter in there, um, hide treats under boxes, uh, give them a, a really nice chew bone, something to keep them busy while this new dog is exploring their territory. Um, because then you're also associating the new dog coming in with something positive. So you have this new dog coming in and your new, your current resident dog or dogs will be like, oh, wait, something's new, but I'm eating peanut butter while it's happening. So it must not be that bad. Um, so, and make sure that you are calm. Uh, you can be excited, but if you feel stressed or um, are freaking out for any reason, the dogs are going to feel that in, in any situation. Um, and then also when I mentioned picking up your belongings, make sure you pick up your resident dog's belongings. If you have a resident dog, toys, treats, um, you can even hide the bed just so that way there's not that possessive um, factor that could happen um, when you're bringing a dog into a household. So um, if you do have resident dogs, uh, for meet and greets, you're gonna wanna leash each dog up. Um, so you do wanna have two people home um, when you do this introduction. If you come home and uh, your roommate or significant other isn't gonna be home for a while, just keep the dogs separate, no matter how tempted you are, it's gonna work out better in the end. Um, so uh, make sure it's a calm environment. Um, if you didn't do a meet and greet at a shelter, then it's a good idea to take the dogs out front. So it's not actually in the house, you're outside more on neutral territory. Um, and you just want to stay loose and relaxed. And if you can keep the leash loose, because sometimes dogs get crazy on a leash if they're being pulled and they start uh, associating things if they're getting choked out with that dog. Um, so you want this interaction to be um, free will. You don't want to force it. So when you and the other person are walking, uh, you want to walk by each other first. So just a drive by. Um, and then you can actually the second time, like if that goes okay, because you want to make sure that goes okay. Uh, if that goes okay, then you can move into an actual like um, a touch. So maybe no sniffing, butt sniffing, um, butt sniffing's better. Uh, if that goes okay, then you can take them for a little walk side by side. So they're actually interacting and getting into that pack mentality. Um, again, this is assuming all things go well. Um, don't force an interaction. I'm going to say that over and over again. Do not force an interaction. If dogs don't want to meet each other, don't make them meet each other. Uh, it's something that we see happen all the time. Like when we're at paws in the park, we're like, no, 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 just back up, stay back. It's okay. If dogs don't want to be together, dogs don't want to be together. It's the same thing with humans. If we don't want to be with certain people, we, we don't need to be forced to do that. Um, and you want to be patient. Again, um, this is something new for the dog. It's, it's new for you too, but the dog is more stressed because they're in an environment. You're in an environment that you recognize and are, are comfortable with. So uh, make sure you be patient. If if you feel yourself getting overwhelmed and freaked out and you have a third person there, swap out and give them the leash. Um, if you do have the leash, you want to remain positive and happy. So if you do have these interactions, what you can do is when each time something good happens, you pull each dog aside and you give them a treat. Make sure you're not giving them a treat together right next to each other because you want to avoid food aggression. Not saying that's necessarily going to happen, but if, if it does, then you can do that. How about the new dog meeting resident cats? So um, same thing, I would keep cats um, in separate rooms. 
And then uh, I we're going to go over it with cat to cat introductions, but like the gate meeting probably is ideal to do um, with dogs and cats. And you just have to make sure that there's something there that the cats can't jump over. Um, but keeping them separate with the gate is probably the best way to do an introduction with a dog to a cat. Um, and in my opinion, um, people might do it different ways, but I feel like having a barrier there, um, as long as the dog isn't barrier reactive and most of them aren't going to be in that case. Um, or if you don't have a gate, what you can do is put a cat in the carrier. If the cat isn't stressed out in a carrier, um, then you can have the dog smell the carrier, um, which is what I've had my dogs do when I brought kittens home. Um, the kittens haven't always been happy, uh, but for the most part it works. And I can tell if the dogs are gonna freak out or not. Um, so when you are doing this, uh, like I said, you can reward dogs when things are going well um, and just make sure that they're away from each other. You do wanna pay attention to body language. Um, dogs are very, they communicate a lot with their bodies because they can't talk, right? So we're trained to um, listen to that. Um, so if it's loose, wiggly, happy, all that kind of stuff, it means things are going well. It's the same thing as in play groups that we look at. Um, between that gate, if dogs are stiff and their eyes are like this, then that means they're stressed out and we want to reset. So if you do notice that, you want to reset. So you separate the dogs and then go back to square one with the passing by wherever that comfort level was for that dog. Um, if you see, if, if you hear any growling, teeth bearing, anything snarling like that, that dog is telling you they don't want to be by that other dog. So you have to go back to square one. Um, and if you can't get past a point um, where there is no teeth, there, there's no teeth bearing, snarling, anything like that, um, then you can consult our behaviorist or consult a behaviorist um, or it could be that you need to keep the dogs separated for a night in different rooms before you try this again. Cause it could just be that very initial, oh my gosh, I was at the shelter for a day and now I'm here. I don't know what's going on. Um, so again, body language is super important, but that's something you guys probably know if you do own a dog. Um, if you don't, then you know that, um, then you're learning that body language is something you really have to pay attention to when, um, dogs meet each other. Um, if when you do start over, if you're going to keep going, you just distract the dogs with something. So you want to have toys and treats handy to bring them back to a positive mindset before trying again. Um, so if everything goes well, you take them on a walk, everything's going awesome, then it's time to go back in the house. So we go back in the house and um, you're going to keep them on the leash. You don't want to let them go flying around. So your resident dog knows where it's going. The new dog should have sniffed the lay of the land, gotten an idea at least where they are at this point. Um, so you want to keep them on leash. Let them explore together. Make sure that everything's picked up again. Um, and then if that goes well, then you can let them off leash because that means, you know, um, everybody's happy. The body language again, when you see dogs shake and they're together, they're shaking stress off. So you should get excited if you see the stress shake. Um because that means that they're letting go of this tension and they're like, ah, I can relax. I, I feel okay with this situation. Um, so if here's the caveat to this. I'm talking as if you only have one dog at home. So if you have two dogs at home, you have to do this process twice. So you keep them both separate. You do separate meet and greets, and then you'd have to do everybody together. So um, it's a little bit more complicated. However, I will tell you, I did not follow this method. Um, I brought Triple home when she was a puppy. So with puppies, it's a little different. I had her in the carrier um, and I left her in there and I let Hops and Schooner smell the carrier um, and they were okay with it. And then I opened the carrier, Triple came out and I let them do their thing in the backyard. Um, it's a little different when you know your dog. So if you know your dogs well enough, like if you had Schooner here, um, he loves everybody and everything. It's a little different. So you just got to trust your instincts, but basic. This is the basic stuff that you want to follow. And if anybody asks you these questions, now you guys know, hey, there are steps. You can always look this stuff up online. It's, I think, on ASPCA's website. Um, we just did a blog about it. Um, but with puppies, it's different. Again, um, if you have a dog that doesn't like small animals, don't get a puppy. Don't get a puppy. You're setting that dog up for failure if you get a puppy and they don't like small animals. Um, the best thing 
I can say again is let them smell that that carrier. If it's an older puppy, then you can do this process with the leashes. Um, but you can, if you feel more comfortable, take the dog outside and let them smell the carrier on the leash and um, leash up the puppy if you want. But you can do it a little bit differently by doing the carrier. Or if you want, if you feel more comfortable doing the gate method, you can do the gate method. Um, puppies don't know. So your older dogs might correct puppies that they doing things that necessarily other dogs wouldn't need correction on because puppies need to socialize. They need to learn boundaries. Um, so when your dog might snap, if that other puppy is coming near their toy, they're just saying, hey, puppy, this is my toy. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. You don't want to correct your resident dog for doing that because they're trying to communicate. Now, obviously, if it turns into a fight or a scuffle or something, you want to get water bottle, make loud noises, scream, yell, all that kind of stuff. Um, but for the most part, um, you have a sense if it's going to work out. Um, so you've got your resident dog here. Um, you've made it through the night. You want to, uh, that night, make sure that that dog has its own stuff. So you don't want to make your dog share a bed if they're going to sleep in beds. You don't make them share crates. They need to have separate crates. Um, and if you want, what you can do, because uh, I had a friend just adopt an adult dog and she adopted another dog from us. Um, she crated the new dog and let the resident dog run around. So the new dog was getting used to its surroundings, but sleeping in the crate and crate training, but still had exposure to the resident dog at night. So um, there weren't any issues there. It seemed to work well for them. So they transitioned with crate training the, the new dog um, and letting the resident dog run around because they can still get used to each other. They still have their own spaces. They had two separate beds for the dogs. Everybody has their own carrier or uh, crate. So um, that's what you want to keep in mind in the days to follow. Make sure that the dogs have their own stuff, their own food bowls. Um, as far as feeding goes, feed them separate at first because um, you don't want to push that limit. Um, feed them in separate rooms. You can feed them in their crates. Just um, when you're first introducing the dogs, you want to make sure they have their own safe spaces. It could be a room, crate, um, the kitchen versus the living room, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, just so that way your resident dog isn't like, whoa, this new dog's taking over everything. Um, as you go progress through the days, um, if you're able to give them treats together, uh, which is something you can try, like put an arm here, put an arm here, and then you have the dogs on either side of you. Um, then you can try and progress to feeding them in the same room. Uh, I will tell you that all my dogs eat in the same room. Um, triple gets a little grumbly if they get special meals. So I have to make sure to put her off to the side because Schooner is a pig and will eat everybody's food if he can. Um, so it's just a little different. You have to trust your instincts here and don't push stuff. That's the most important thing and be patient. Um, so days following the first day, uh, everybody a separate place to call their own. If you ever see uh, your resident dog um, like tensing up, and you feel like they need a break, separate them. They're dogs. You know that's not how you're, they're going to live. Um, or your new dog. If that dog looks like they're getting overwhelmed with stuff, give them a break. It's okay to keep them separate for a little bit. You're not a bad dog uh, owner for keeping your dog separate for a little bit. You're giving them the break they need, um, and you always want to look for those stress shakes. Um, socializing is super important, regardless if it's a puppy or an adult, because um, some of our adult dogs come in, and they aren't socialized. They, they aren't really sure what to do. So have your friends come over, have your family come over. Uh, just make sure when they come over, like they come in and they give the dog a treat. Um, or when that dog does something positive and people are over, like if they're laying down and behaving, um, then give them a treat. Just praise them. Do everything that you can to let, like shape the behavior of what, how you want your dogs to act. Like right now, Schooner is laying down and being a super good gentleman. So I'm going to give him a treat because he's behaving. Um, so it, you do want to socialize. Uh, the only caveat to that is if you have puppies, uh, don't take them out until they get the rabies vaccine. Uh, it's dangerous to go out and take your puppies out unvaccinated. That's something that you shouldn't be doing. Um, so don't be afraid to take your dogs out and about together, let them explore parks, let them go for walks together, uh, do all that kind of stuff so they can get used to being like, okay, this is it. And even if you see neighbors and they look at the neighbors and they don't react, give them a treat while you're walking. 
um, socialization is very key. You want to establish a routine. So don't feed the dog at 10 o'clock in the morning one day and then seven o'clock in the morning the next day. I know it's really hard because maybe you have a crazy work schedule or your sleep schedule's off or what, whatever it is. Um, pop up, feed the dogs, and then go back to bed if you don't like waking up at 7 a.m. Um, I have to do that sometimes uh, because my dogs like to wake up between 6.30 and 7, no matter what day it is. Sometimes they leave me alone, and then other days I have triple doing this to my face constantly. Sometimes I think she's part cat, but I think it's the box earner. Um Start training early. So it's never too early to start training your dog, uh, train them with tricks, train them uh, how to let you know it's time to go to the bathroom. Sometimes with adult dogs, they let you know, they know that the door is the way out. So um, I had to train mine with a dog door. Lucky enough, I have a dog door in a backyard. So I just had to train him how to use the dog door. And it was easier because Schooner learned super fast. So they just kind of followed him. Same thing when I have puppies at my house. Uh, the last litter I had, they learned the dog door the first day, which was crazy. Um, you want to make your dogs a priority. So you just brought this living, beautiful creature into your home. You don't want to toss it aside like kids do with their new favorite toy or something they got from the store. Um, so you want to make them a priority. Make sure that they're adjusting okay. Uh, they're, they're yours. They're going to be yours forever. Um, so you want to make sure that they feel welcome, that they are important to you. So you don't just want to be like, oh, I'm going to take you for a walk today and play fetch with you, and then tomorrow you don't do anything with them. Because then they're going to be confused, like, why am I getting ignored? Dogs need attention and love. Um, again, be patient, be patient with the dogs. They are learning. They don't understand stuff. Um, especially dogs that aren't potty trained, you are going to get frustrated, um, and go through a lot of pee pads and probably clean the carpet a lot and the tile or whatever kind of flooring you have. Um, you might even have to clean your curtains because they like to lift their leg and pee on the curtains. My sister's dog likes to come over and pee on the curtains. So if I had to start lifting the curtains up, so Noodle doesn't whiz on my curtains every time he's over because he likes to mark. Um, food, food is really important. So we feed science diet. So what we tell everyone, uh, you don't have to feed science diet, but you need to keep it in their diet for the first couple days um, and mix it together with the food that you want to feed and then kind of move it out. Otherwise your poor dog is gonna have probably some explosive diarrhea that you don't wanna clean up. So make sure that you transition it, but don't skimp on food. Um, just like you don't want to eat trash, the dogs don't want to eat trash either. So make sure you are giving them good diet stuff. Right, Scoons? Come up here. Um, let's see what else. After a few weeks, yes. So um, back to the thing, I would recommend keeping your dog, dog separate when you leave the house when you first bring a new one home, um, whether you keep them in separate rooms or in crates. Uh, first couple of weeks while they transition, uh, you want to keep them separate. And then if they get along and seem like best pals, you can start leaving them alone together out and about at your house. Um, I would start with short periods of time. So if you just have to run the store real quick and you're gone for an hour, boom, great. You want to keep it positive. So just build off of what you feel comfortable um, for, especially with puppies. If you're potty training and stuff, it's the same thing. Like they should learn how to use the crate. Um in increase time gradually. The other thing when you are leaving the dogs out, don't leave food and toys out when you first leave them um, alone together. So you can kind of gauge that situation because if you're sitting back um, watching your favorite movie and you have the dogs out together and they're being fine um, and playing with toys and doing stuff with each other and it's not that big of a deal, um, it's okay. But again, just to be safe, when you first start leaving them alone together, pick all that stuff up um, cause they should be able to entertain themselves for an hour. Uh, if there's uneaten food, pick that up regardless if you're there or not. Uh, you don't want one chow hound to become big and fat. And then you wonder why are you getting so fat? And it's because they're stealing your other dog's food. Um, you can feed them together again if you don't have any mishaps. Um, so just make sure again, follow the routine, be patient. Uh, do whatever is best for your dog. Just because somebody else lets their dogs run around like crazy all day, like me, doesn't mean that's going to be the best fit for your household. If you have to crate your dog for, you know, eight hours a day 
and but you get to keep them in the home, it's okay. What you want to do is make sure that they know Crate is a safe place and a happy place. So you always throw treats in there when you put them in there. You give them their favorite toys when they're in there. Make sure they're not bored in there and they won't think that the Crate is a terrible place to go. Um, so the caveat to all this, of course, is don't force it. If you don't see that this is going well, you are not a bad person if you ask for help. Or if you go back to the shelter and say, I really tried everything I could, but this is not the right fit. I want to make sure that this dog is safe and my dog is safe. There's nothing wrong with this dog. They just didn't mesh well. Um, so you're not a bad person for doing that. We understand not every dog is going to get along. Not every cat is going to get along. Uh, just like humans, we don't all get along. Um, so if you see anything like raised temperaments, dogs getting overwhelmed, separate them. If you see this continually ongoing, there is no break. There's no shakeoffs. Uh, there's always this tense feeling because you can feel it. Don't force it and ask for help or do the responsible thing and just bring the dog back to us or where, wherever you got them. Um, because you're not a bad person. You tried, you tried your best. Um, as long as you follow these steps. Um, if fights occur, don't get in between them. I know it's easier said than done and your first instinct is to jump in. Um, the best thing to do is make really loud noises, uh, be distracting, scream at the top of your lungs. If you have pots and pans, pots and pans um, bang them. If you have a water bottle, I have two water bottles in my household that I keep around at all times. Spray them in the face. Um, if they aren't able to be separated, sometimes you have to do what isn't great, um, but if you have like a water bottle or something, you can tap them on the head with it. Um, but if you are able to separate the fight, what you need to do um, is get keep the dogs separate from each other so they don't get back into it. But don't go in the middle of a fight ever, regardless of what is going on, because you can get extremely hurt. Um, hopefully you guys don't ever have to deal with that in your household. Um, but yeah, that's it. And again, with puppies, it's a little different. Uh, they're puppies. They're going to be learning a lot more than a dog is. Um, with puppies, it's super important to keep a routine, routine. And don't be afraid to crate them either. You want to do a small space. So um, it sounds mean, but if they don't have as much room to move, they're less likely to pee in their crate because they don't want to sit in their pee all day. So you might your crate might be a little bit smaller than what you're used to. And then you can gradually make it a bigger space. Um, so make sure routine, be patient, be positive, be happy, and don't be afraid to reach out for help if you guys need it. Um, does anybody have any questions about dogs and bringing them home and how you can set them up for success? Um, it's thought that it takes three full weeks for a dog to adjust to a household now, um, which isn't too shocking, especially for a shelter dog because they've been in a different environment. Um, some dogs adjust quicker than others, just like some cats adjust quicker than others. But um, that is all Schooner and I have for you guys. Hopefully you found this uh, informational. Like I said, hopefully we're going to have a video of a dog meet and greet and how to and whatnot and what you guys want to look for. Um, but do you guys have any questions about anything? Schooner would like to know. Right, bud? Schooner says, I'll answer any questions you have. He says, I'm great at meet and greets, right? No questions? Schooner's here and waiting. Everything seems pretty straightforward and what you guys would expect. Looking forward to the video, definitely. So I, when I get back to the shelter, I will work on doing that and probably use Schooner because he is a really good meet and greet dog. Um, do you guys have any questions about anything else? Schooner, come here. Does anybody have any comments, anything like that? He is very, he was very well behaved. It's because he's by himself. He doesn't have any troublemakers with them. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. Um, I'll talk to you guys Friday. Friday's going to be Zoom. Stephanie's going to pop on there because she is more of an expert about cats than I am. Uh, so she's going to help with cat introductions, at home stuff. Um, it's going to be Friday at 11 o'clock, Pat. Um, let's see. Any idea when volunteers will be back at the shelter? I don't know. Um, that's, we were uh, exploring the offsite stuff with cats. Um, 
I am trying to find out when we can have you guys back because the instant we can, I will definitely let you guys know. Um, I wouldn't guess any time this month, hopefully next month, but I'm not sure what's going to happen. So um, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you there. Um, but I know stuff is slowly opening back up. We just want to make sure when we open everything back up to the volunteers that we're keeping you guys safe. Um, so good questions. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, thanks again for joining us. Schooner says that he always enjoys hosting and everything's always better when he's around. So you guys take care. And if you want to pop on 11 o'clock, uh, via Zoom on Friday, we will be talking about the kitties. And Schooner says, peace out, man. Have an awesome Wednesday. See you guys later. Here he comes. He's coming for the camera. It's Scoony Tunes. <laughs>